All right, this is video two in this series going over the casting example of this small ring object. Again, this is the problem statement if you need to review along with the final dimensions. All right, where we left off, this was the example of uh, how you might cast multiple parts with one sprue. All right, key important things to note uh, on this. We have the sprue area at the very bottom here. All right. Initially here, the area of the cross-sectional area of this runner needs to equal the cross-sectional area of the sprue. So all the material flowing in can have the same flow rate going into the sprue. Once this splits, however, right, however many parts you're going to be creating, the gate cross-sectional area, and we're going to have six parts as stated in the problem, needs to be one-sixth of the sprue area, right? And that is to maintain equal flow rate. If you had the skate area equal to the sprue cross-sectional area, right, you'd only have a sixth of the flow, total flow, going through that cross-sectional area, right? So you wouldn't be fully filling that runner and that gate, which is not good. So you choke down the gate cross-sectional area in order to maintain a constant steady full flow. Now, we need to place a riser to help fill this part. All right, so we're going to be filling in, this is a, looking at it from the side, we have our rudder coming in, we choke down for our gate to reduce the cross-sectional area. And then we have our part. This is again looking in from the side. We'll place our riser. And it said it was roughly a cylinder, right? And it would fill in something like this. Now, noting here that cylinders, I'm sorry, uh, rings are very hard to cast. So it's good to place your riser on the opposite side as the gate. Right, so this way, as material comes in, it's going to split and go around the two edges of the ring. You're going to meet on the far side. And you've got this riser here on the far side of the ring to help fill in as the material is shrinking as it cools and solidifies. Right, so you're going to place the riser up here. Now, we need to then calculate and make sure that the solidification time of your riser, right, this is your riser, this is your part. You want to make sure that the solidification time of your part is less than the solidification time of your riser. Right? And specifically, in the problem statement, it says at least 25% more time. Right? So, So you add on an additional 25% of time for your solidification time of the part, and that's how much time we want your riser solidification time to equal. All right? So how do we go about calculating that? Well, we know that solidification time is equal to Shvornov's rule, which is equal to the volume of the part over the surface area times a mold constant, C, all squared. This one was going to be times your 25%. And this is going to be times your mold constant, volume of your riser, surface area of your riser, also squared. Now, since this is in the same mold, 
best part, cancel, cancel. This is, gives us a way to calculate now if we have a volume of our riser, surface area of our riser, volume of our part, surface area of our part, we can now begin to find out the exact dimensions of this, right? We can calculate the dimensions of our part. We know that we're going to be using a cylindrical uh, riser, and in the problem statement it said that the diameter to the height was one to one. So we can then calculate uh, ratio for the surface area as well as the volume. It should give us only one unknown variable on this side. Everything on this side should be known. It'd be a small amount of math to plug all that in, which we'll do. And then we should be able to find a, an expression to solve for the diameter for the riser using Schwarzenegger's rule here. All right, so let's go ahead and do that. All right, so let's take a look at this. So we have uh, an expression for the solidification time for our part and our riser, and we know that the uh, riser needs to solidify 25% longer than our part. Right? So looking at solely just the part right, and calculating the volume of it, right, we can look at this as a ring with the quarter of a circular torus cut out of the corner. Right? This is essentially what a cross-sectional area of our ring is going to be, right? So we're cutting out this little corner piece of it, right? So the volume of that is going to be this ring minus a quarter of that circular torus, right? So when you plug in the values that we have for our dimensions, you come up with the volume of that part is 15.34 cubic inches for the volume of the part, right? Now we need to calculate the surface area of that part. We've broken that down into a couple different parts. Right? We have the surface area of the top, surface area of the bottom, and now remember this whole thing is revolved. Right? The surface area of the inside, surface area of the outside bottom, as well as the surface area of the outside top, right? which is going to be this round part here. Right? So if you work each one of those out, those will be 6.01 square inches, 18.85, 14.33, 7.6, and 9.28 square inches. So the total surface area of this part here, 56.06 square inches. So now the ratio of the volume to the surface area of our part is 0.274 inches. Right? So this is essentially this part right here.